Good afternoon, everyone. This is The Cataclysm, and I'm Tony Early. Hope everyone is doing great. I named this channel The Cataclysm because I wanted to warn everyone of a time period that's coming known as the Tribulation Days. In the Bible, it's referred to as Daniel's 70th week, or the day of Jacob's trouble, or even the day of the Lord. It's a time period where um, a seven-year time period of just the most hellish, horrendous, nightmarish things you could ever imagine. And the devil will be on the earth with his minions and his antichrist, his incarnate. And there will be a kingdom set up and worship of the devil will be forced or you'll, or you'll be killed. And not on top of that, it's going to be when God is pouring out his wrath on the wicked in, in increments that are going to get worse and worse and worse throughout the seven years up until the climax, until Jesus returns to finish the job and sets his feet down on the Mount of Olives and sets up his millennium kingdom where he will rule for a thousand years. Um, you don't want to be caught in this time period. It's going to be horrendous. But before it happens, Jesus is coming for his church. He promised to come back for his church. He's not coming to the earth. Paul says that the dead in Christ would rise first on this day known as the, the resurrection. Um, the dead in Christ would rise first, and those left alive and remaining would be called up to meet with them in the air and forever be with the Lord. But during, uh, once we go up, we will be in heaven for seven years while the tribulation is happening on the earth. And after that, Jesus will return with us to the earth to destroy the Antichrist and his minions and send the devil, in, uh, and you know, put the devil back in hell for a thousand years. Um, you don't want to be caught in that seven years. Get saved now before time runs out. Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on a cross, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day and spilled his precious blood for redemption of sins. He went back up to heaven and made atonement for us. It's all about faith in his blood and his sacrifice. Um, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Um, also says that um, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works. It is the gift of God, not of ourselves, lest anyone would boast. Um, you can't get there by doing deeds, guys, not by works, not by confessions or repentance or any of those things. The only way that you can get to heaven is through Christ and belief in him. That's what the Bible is very, very clear about. It says many times throughout the, the books of Paul, our, the apostle to the Gentiles, that the only way to be saved is to believe in Christ, to decept, accept him, to believe and put, him, put your faith in him. And it's not just believing that he exists, but for the demons believe that he exists and the devil knows. But it's not about just believing that he exists. It's about believing in him. In other words, putting your trust in him and your faith in him, that he can and will save you. And that his blood, that the sacrifice that he made with his blood was sufficient for all your sins, past, present, and future. And the moment you believe, you are saved and sealed with that spirit of promise, the Holy Spirit, which will seal you until the day of redemption. And then, when God sends you the Holy Spirit, and he will, then your good deeds will be manifest. You will actually, not only will you stop desiring to do sin as much you may not altogether stop because, you know, once you get saved, it's, it's kind of a, um, it's a gradual thing. You'll, you'll begin to change. God will change you into a different creature, but it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. For some, it happens quicker than others. But what will happen is that you will begin to change and you will start losing the desire to commit sin. And you will want to do things for the Lord. You're going to want to. It just is something that you just can't help. With the Holy Spirit comes inside of you, it convicts you constantly makes you want to do right um, because without the Holy Spirit you're not the same you're more worldly you're more carnal you know you might want to do good but it's much harder without the helper that's what Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the helper so get saved today guys believe that's all it is about belief putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ the only name that can save you the only name by which one can be saved Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes unto the Father except through me. Um, it's not about how many times you go to church. You know, so I hear people all the time say, I think I'm a good person. I think I'll go to heaven. There's you, you, you're th The reason why you're saying I think is because you don't know for sure. And the way you can know for sure is through Jesus Christ. 
It's not about being a good person. You could be a good person as far as other people think. I mean, for what it's worth, you could be a, a really good person, but you're never going to be good enough for God. He's a holy God, a perfect God who expects nothing, nothing less than perfection. And not to mention, we are born into it to begin with. Our, our sins, the sin that we have, I mean, we're born into sin from the for birth because of what Adam and Eve did in the garden. They broke the very first law. And that very first law was all it took to condemn us to eternity in hell. All you have to do, believe in Jesus to reverse that curse and it sets you free. It, Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice reverses that curse. We are all in that state of that curse of sin from birth. So even if you could live a perfect life, which you can't, but even if you could restrain from all sin, even from the time of birth, you're still in the flesh, which is already condemned to die because of the sin of Adam and Eve. So without Christ, there's no hope. It's absolutely hopeless. That's why it talks about um, Jesus saying that we believe we're saved through Christ when we believe. But if we don't believe, we're condemned already because we didn't believe in him. Um, not exactly those words, just paraphrasing, but that's, you know, basically. So anyways, guys, I want to play the show far before I get into the rapture talk because that's, uh, that's what's coming next. So if you got earbuds in, take them out, lower your volume so it don't blast your eardrums. We'll be hearing the real show far soon, guys. Um, today I want to talk about earthquakes, orbs, and um, a very, um, uh, I don't know what to call it other than um, a very surreal confirmation from a brother in Christ. And um, sorry about that, guys. I got to put my paper down. The fan's going to blow the paper away here. I don't want to lose my notes. Um, so if you guys have been, um, subscribed to my channel, you probably remember me a actually all the way back, uh, 2020, um, when I had talked about having a dream of an earthquake and, um, in South Carolina where I live years ago and, um, my wife wound up moving, her clinic wound up moving down the road to the parking lot across the street from the very place that I had that dream. At the time of the dream, the place where the earthquake was happening was a big open field. Now there's actually a, there's actually a, a strip mall there with, with shopping centers and restaurants and everything. But in 2020, and those things were there in 2020, by the way, they had already built all that stuff. But um, in 2020, in the morning early, about 8.30, I think, she called me up from her clinic and said they felt they think they felt an earthquake. And I, um, my jaw dropped to the ground, obviously, because I knew that she had moved where she was at. That was literally right there where I had to dream about the earthquake, and it, it startled me. So um, I checked into it and found out there was an earthquake in, uh, at the Virginia State Line that was felt all the way down to Columbia, South Carolina. She felt it. I didn't feel it where I was at. Um, I'm about 20, 25 minutes from where she works, or we are, you know, where we live. And... Um, that was interesting, okay? Well, we just had three more earthquakes in South Carolina. Significant sized, but um, South Carolina is not, uh, we don't have many here, okay? We, I mean, they're very, very rare. It's, it's, um, this region is not that known for earthquakes, especially um, uh, that many at once. Um, so I feel like that dream is coming full circle um, now that we've had that dream, because it's not it. I mean, that's not the only thing. With all the other things going on that we've talked about, you know, this is just one of many. Also, the orbs. Um, you guys may remember me having a rapture dream about orbs coming down, red orbs, and there was different colored orbs, but the, the main ones I remember were red, and they were kind of pulsating. They came down through the house, and as they came, you know, we saw we saw something out the window, basically. That's how the whole thing started. We saw lights through the window. We looked out the window and saw them coming, but they came all the way down through the house into the living room where we were at, and... Um, I started rising and other people started rising. I started shouting, it's the rapture, it's the rapture. Um, 
I don't think it was the orbs that was taking us up because we could still see them going up. We could still see the orbs, but it was like a timeline or something. I don't, that's what I think. It was some kind of a, a time stamp. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But um, I made that video, and my sister contacted me. We were planning on that weekend going down to visit with her, and she lives a couple hours away, to have a cookout. It was in June, I believe. It was in the summer. And um, she says, she sent me a Facebook message that says, when you get down here, I got something to tell you that's really important. She said about that um, video you had, because I watched it. So she tells me when I get down there that a couple weeks before I made that video, she had not told me, but she said she was in the bathroom and a light was uh, coming through the window, through the blinds, the same way it happened in my dream. She looked out the window and there was a giant red orb. She said this thing must have been 50 feet in diameter over the house across the street and it was like pulsating, orange is you know, red. And she said it was shining a light down onto the house across the street. And she started to yell at her husband to come and look. And the thing just went, it just took off. It was gone in a flash. Um, my sister is not, um, all I can tell you is that she's true to a fault. She, um, she always has been. She's not one to, uh, she's not superstitious at all. She loves the Lord, but she doesn't, um, she doesn't talk about supernatural things. I mean, this isn't, this isn't her mantra. She doesn't do that. So, of course, when she tells me this, um, it took me not only by surprise, but it gave me lots of encouragement that maybe that was a timestamp, and her seeing one as well was also was um, confirming that timestamp. Well, it, it got forgotten about for a while, and then uh, last year there was some more red orbs spotted somewhere. I think it was in New Jersey, somewhere like that, and uh, it made the news. And then last week... Lo and behold, in um, San Diego, California, hundreds, maybe thousands of people witnessed a chain, uh, like a bunch of these orbs in the sky that were like in formation, like some of them were like shaped almost like, like triangles or wings or whatever, and they were pulsating orange and red. And um, th th just the calls just came flooding in, the news. I've seen several news broadcasts already. But not only was they seen in San Diego, which you know, was, was um, the, what really made the news, but come to find out, these things were seen in Mexico and in several other countries. And I'm not, I can't remember where. I can't, even, can't remember where I saw them, but so it was a couple other countries, kind of like that. It was like, I think maybe South America or somewhere. I'm not sure. But other countries, there was large sightings with lots of, with many people, not just, you know, like some obscure sighting off in the country somewhere, but major. And so the earthquakes and the between the earthquakes and the orbs and the fact that we are in you know, coming into the summer time um, in the very year that we think could be the very last possibility of the fig tree generation being in effect, and the fact that they have red heifers now that by the fall, as long as nothing changes again, who who were actually they were um, candidates at some point, but then they were discounted because they had some of the red hairs turned white or some of the color. Now they've turned back red, and now they're saying that they have three viable candidates for a sacrifice this fall, as long as nothing else changes. And of course, they got to have the red heifers to cleanse the, the, the people and the, the area in order to do the daily sacrifice and to build a third temple. And we've got Joe Biden about to go over to um, Israel to talk about a two-state solution, which we know is not good. And we don't have time to get in all the details of all these things. I just want to cover them like real quick. And we've got this, all the stuff with, with Ukraine and Russia. And the, there's a famine coming this fall, they're saying. We've already seen the, the extremely high gas prices. And it seems like there's no end in sight, like it's never going to go back. And I believe that that has something to do with Biden as well. But then there's this, this a chain, uh, this supply chain that's breaking down. And they're talking about that the shelves may start emptying out. So for multiple reasons, we're looking at a possible end of our normality, and which is not really normal now because of the pandemic. Things have already kind of changed. But we're having somewhat normality because people are able to eat, drink, marry, give it into marriage, just like Jesus said would, it would be when he comes for, for his church, the, when, when the time of the day of the, um, in the time of his coming. Um, he said that it would be as in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, which but he says in both of those cases, he says, as in the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage. And, 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 then before, and then until Noah went on to the ark with his family and the floods came. And then with Lot, 
They were eating, drinking, planting, harvesting, you know, doing the same kind of stuff until Lot was taken out of the city and the fires from heaven rained down. So there's this theme of normality that all of a sudden gets interrupted by the wrath of God. The tribulation days, guys, is the wrath of God. This is a punishment that was promised to Israel. It's the later, last part of a punishment, a 490-year punishment that was cut off at 483 years. There was seven years left that they had not served. They had not been because Jesus came. And when Jesus came, that time clock of that punishment kind of stopped in his tracks because the age of grace began. And Israel was basically, you know, God turned to turn, you know, turned from that era into the to to the age of grace, where he's focusing on gathering a harvest. The Christians, the, the believers in Christ, the true believers. But when Jesus comes and, and gets his true believers at the rapture, that time clock is going to start back, and that's the 70th week of Daniel. That's that, uh, that prophetic 70th week is a seven-year period because there was 70 weeks of years that was the punishment decreed, which is 490 years. So there's one week left. One prophetic week is seven years. So God is going to begin to pour out his wrath in small quantities, but it's going to get bigger and bigger and worse and worse and worse. We haven't even seen the first of it yet. We haven't seen God's wrath yet. Um, we've seen the beginning of sorrows. We've, we're seeing all this stuff beginning to, to develop. But it hasn't started yet. But I believe in it with all my heart. In 2021, when my brother died, I believe that that was, um, he died on my birthday, uh, January 21st, 2021. And at the time, everybody was talking about Psalms 121, which was kind of blew my mind that he actually passed because he was in my only rapture vision when I was 11 years old. And in that rapture vision, I saw him go first, but I saw a light, a, 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 like the sun exploded. He came over the horizon and I ran towards him and he vanished. And then I braced for heat because I thought it was a nuclear bomb. And all of a sudden I was in the sky. And, and I... All I knew at 11 years old, I was looking at God because he was 30 feet tall. He was bigger than everybody. But as far as you could see, all around him in every direction was people dressed in white robes and gold bands that went from their shoulders to their waist. There were sashes. I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know who. I knew that, that Jesus was deity, and, and I, and, but I didn't know it was Jesus. Even though he had his hands out, even though he is, had his hands out, I was 11 years old. And um, I didn't know about the rapture. I didn't know about the catching away. I didn't know about we were meeting with him in the sky. Any of that stuff. I just knew that I was going to heaven. I knew that's what it was. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. And it was so real. Um, I saw his eyes even. His eyes were these brilliant colors of emerald greens and blues. And I can't even describe. And I remember thinking when it was happening that his eyes are real. And I know that's the only way I can describe them because... Compared to us who have these carnal, fleshly eyes, his eyes were real. They were eternal. They were pure. They were, they cut right through you. You couldn't stare at him but a second, and then you had to turn away. You couldn't even hardly look at his eyes. Um, but I know now that I saw Jesus, and I knew that it was the rap I know now that it was the rapture that I saw a glimpse of it. Well, I started fading away, and the thing, and I, and I woke up, or I actually felt like I fell back into my body. I don't think that I was ever, and I know I never went to sleep, but I don't think that this was any kind of a dream but more like a heavenly slideshow. I don't think that I actually went to heaven, but I think that I was taken out of my body for a moment and given a glimpse of it, of the rapture. And maybe I was taken out of my body because maybe we can't in the human human eyes and in, in the human body, we cannot see certain things. I don't know, the spiritual world, maybe. I, I don't know, but, but that's what it felt like. It felt like I was taken out of my body. Because when I first laid down in the bed, I was only 11 years old and I came in from playing. I laid down in the bed like one, two, three, <laughs> It was like I fell through the bed and like I was standing in the future in my own house. And um, I knew it was my house. I knew it was way in the future. And my brother Kenny was the only one in the dream and he was hunched over looking at the ground. And I've been telling people for years, my whole life, since I was 11, that he was looking for something. Well, he winds up in 2020 developing cancer. And he couldn't lay down in the bed because he wasn't able to breathe. He had a big tumor and didn't know it. So he had to sit in this chair, kind of like the one I'm in. He would sit there and he would just sleep like this right here. And all, all night long, every night, for months and months, until he developed a hunch. And he was looking down at the ground all the time. He couldn't help it whenever he walked. He had a big knot in his neck. So in that vision, he was looking down at the ground because it was at this time. 
he had this cancer and he was he couldn't help but look down at the ground he was hunched over and my whole family realized this too they were wait remember when you had the vision you see was hunched everybody realized it i've been telling him for years he says oh my gosh and he was the only one in my vision and now he was living with me he wasn't living with me he was living somewhere else i moved him in when hospice came in so that he could be with us he wanted to be with us then he died on my birthday I really thought we were going to the rapture together. I thought when I saw him go that that was the rapture we went together. But I remembered that Paul said it happens in a twinkle of an eye. So I, if it happens that fast, I wouldn't have had time to see him go first. So this vision was more prophetic in, in nature. More so than a real event because I never actually seen him walking around the yard this way. Um, not not like this. I mean, I would have had to force it. I would have had to ask him to go out in the yard and you know, because it never actually happened like that. But before he died, but but I think it was prophetic in nature. And so I saw him hunched over because in my, my, my vision was telling me that there would be a day when he would be living with me. And my brother Jack, my older brother was gone. We always were together and now he was gone. He's dead, he died in 2018. My sister has moved off to another another part of the state where I, I never see her hardly. And she don't come around, She's she just can't. There's reasons I won't get into. So Kenny was the only one left in my life who, who I was seeing on a regular basis. I don't even see my cousins. My aunts and uncles are all dead. I don't see my cousins anymore. I just, we just, you know, we've grown apart over the years because we all have families and we're all busy and we just don't get together anymore. They live quite a distance from me. He was the only one in it. He was the only one in my life. And he was the only one in the vision. And I saw him hunched over, like I said, and and I saw him go first. So I think that, that that was prophetic for I would see him die. He would pass away. He would be the dead, become the dead in Christ. And then, but but I, I'm trying to figure out, well, how long before the rapture happens after? Because I know that I was taken up in the rapture because I never felt any pain or anything. I know I didn't die. I was snatched. I was, I was just instantly in the sky looking at Jesus and all the saints dressed in white robes. So when I think about what happened before I saw the light, I was standing on the side of the house looking over and saw him walking around. The light came up over the horizon and I started running towards him. It took me about one, two, two to three seconds tops. I don't even think it took three seconds. I mean, because I mean, it, was, you know, it wasn't that far. <clears throat> Probably about two seconds in reality. And I don't know what that means, but could that have given me a clue to a certain amount of time and now this happened in January 21st of 2021 is when he passed away. And now it's, you know, July of 2022. Could that have been a representation of no more than two years or sometime between, you know, two and three? I don't, I don't know. I, just, I don't know what any of this means. First, I thought it might have been like a, you know, the two seconds could have been equated to God's timing, which, you know, of course, Jesus says it was as a thousand years. A day to God is as a thousand years to us. When you figure it out like that, it comes out to about 4.2, um, what is it, 4.2 days, I think, something like that. So that long has long since passed. Even if it were eight days or even it was 16 days, it's long since passed. So I, don't, I think it was a time stamp. I think it meant something. I don't know what. But it's kind of ironic that I had all those dreams about the earthquakes and the orbs, and now all this stuff is happening again. It's all in the news again. And then if you remember, if you're watching my channels. You remember me talking about um, hearing a bear out on the porch. I heard it coming from the driveway, and um, I heard it crystal clear. I know what a bear sounds like. It was, and I mean, it wasn't demonic. It was a bear. I, you could just, I know. I knew. I wasn't even afraid because I knew exactly what that sound was. I've heard it so many times. But there wasn't nothing there. I, where I heard it coming from, you know, this sound was reflecting that thing was about the backyard. There's woods back there. It could have been reflecting off the cars or something. That's possible. But there wasn't nothing there that I could see. But I knew clearly that it was a bear. And so I ran into the house. And I even think I said this in the video. The commenter says, well, you ran. I ran. I, I, I said, I ran. Well, I did. I literally, I ran into the house because I to tell everybody that I think I heard a bear. I didn't think about the Iran part till, till somebody commented in like the next day or something. But I got to work the next morning. I pulled into the gravel. And I live, I mean, I live, <laughs> I park way down at the end of the parking lot in the gravel, way away from the building. And um, behind us is a fence where I park. There's a fence to the road. And then across the street, there's another business. 
And that morning I got out of the car. This was the very next day. I get out of the car and I hear, I turn around like, that sound like turkeys. And um, guy's getting out of his car on the other side. And I said, did, did you hear that? And he said, yeah, if we had a shotgun, we'd have us a dinner. I'm like, that, so you heard it too? He says, yeah, that's turkeys. I ran over to the fence, look across the street. And that's just barely day. Like I can barely see them. There's turkeys all over the neighbor's yard out here in the, in the grass. Um, the docks are on one side of the building. The parking's on the other. There's like a big grassy area in the front of the building. And there's turkeys, wild turkeys running around. I've never, had, until this time, I had never seen wild turkeys like that. I've seen them in passing. In the, I believe I have seen wild turkeys driving down the street really fast. I've, I've noticed like a glimpse of them. It could have even been turkey buzzards because I've seen turkey buzzards got a little red... They kind of look like turkeys from a distance, probably why they call them that. But nevertheless, I have never been that close up and personal to a herd or I don't know if it's a flock, I guess, a flock of turkeys, wild turkeys like that. So I, I'm, I'm, I go to work and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm considering all these things. And then it hit me. The bear and the turkey. And then later that day, someone mentioned, I think it was later that day, I was either work or had just got home. Somebody says, so you ran into the house. So I ran. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, I ran. Turkey, Russia. These are all the main players of the, of the end time prophecies. And so now they're all three. And then some, because now you got Russia in the news. You got Turkey in the news. You got Iran in the news. You also got Israel. You got the United States. You got all the players, including um, China and Korea and, and other places that I believe have something to do with these end time prophecies. Ezekiel 38, Psalms 83, so forth and so on. So guys, we are at a period in time where everything is somewhat normal. My son Tyler got married. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I think I did. So my, my son Tyler's married now. So there was a time where people would be marrying and giving into marriage, drinking, eating, so forth, living somewhat normal, everything going kind of like normal. And then all of a sudden that's going to stop. When? Well, from, from what I'm seeing, I don't know what you guys are seeing, but from what I'm seeing, it looks like this fall, all that normality is going to end. We're going to have famines. We're going to have Israel building a third temple with sacri daily sacrifices. We got um, God's wrath coming because they're talking seriously talking about Israel dividing the land of Israel and their government's crashed again. So like the third time their government has been, they don't have a government. These, I think there was some prophecies about this, Kaduri or some of these uh, Jewish rabbis had some kind of prophecies about that stuff. So all these things that are happening, now you got earthquakes in South Carolina again, and you got these orbs being spotted again, and you got all these things that are happening. And now, today, not, uh, was that this morning? Yeah, this morning, no. I'm sorry, it was yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. Now I'm confused. Yesterday, time's going by so fast, I can't distinguish the time between yesterday and today. It was yesterday. My brother in Christ, a friend of mine, he was telling me he was asking the Lord because he believes it's going to, that the rapture could happen on the 13th and 14th of July. And there's a lot of people that are looking at these dates. Um, and there's a lot there's, there's a lot involved in that, guys. It's being the third month of the Jewish year because of the sun, the moon, the stars, the sun being in Aries and so forth. You know, and this is highly debated, highly controversial. Some people believe it, some people don't. Uh, Flavius Josephus said in the book of the Antiquity of the Jews that um, that the Passover happened when the sun was in Aries, but over two, over two thousand years the sun has moved over into um, into um, Pisces at the first of the year. Well, I mean, if you were living as a Jew and the only way you had to keep up with the feast days was how, where the sun was in a certain constellation, I think that um, you would be consistent. You know, I mean, I don't think God, God says God never changes. I mean, why would he change all of a sudden or allow even time? His stars, his sun and moon, the things that he created for signs and seasons and for days and years and all that stuff. Why would he allow it to change, guys? God doesn't change. He doesn't. It's not his it's not his um, nature or mantra or whatever you want to call it to, to, to make changes in his holy things. And that ought to be enough for anybody to understand that this is. There's something to this, okay? Why did the why was the sun not in Aries during the Passover? I mean, over two thousand years, maybe time got off because of us, because of our measurement of it. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe God is adjusting our time 
fixing it back. Whatever the case is, what I'm getting at is that there is good reason to believe that these that, that this is true. So if May the second or May the first or second was the actual first day of Nissan, that puts us in the third month right now. July would be the third month. The third month. God never gave names to them. Man gave names to them. God would say like the second month, 14th day or whatever. So, so, so this brother's believing that on the 14th, 13th and 14th, it could be the rapture. So he asked the Lord, he says, Lord, he says, he asked the Lord if July 13th and 14th of this month, the month of July, he says, but I know you don't recognize our month. So the third month of this year, um, and being very specific about it, so that, so that he didn't get confused himself, like I did last year with some dates. And um, I obviously was very confused because nothing ever happened. I was wrong. But um, but he wanted to be specific. He didn't want to get caught in that like I did. Because, I mean, I, I, I didn't ask the question right. Or so. Maybe maybe I just, I, maybe he never answered me and I just thought that he did. I mean, you know, we don't um, know everything. I mean, sometimes you, you feel like God is showing you something and maybe he isn't. But this was interesting because he asked the Lord that and he was very specific about it. And he said, Lord, if it's true, if, if, if July 13, 14, Third month, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, could you let me see a license plate with 726 on it? Okay, where he's at, you know, there's six letters. I mean, three numbers, three letters in the tags. And it's normal for his state to have that. So it's not that uncommon to see 726. It's not like, you know, one in a million or anything. But it's not something you see, like, all the time. It's not constantly. So he asked if he could see one. He was just, he was just wanting some confirmation from God. He didn't see one um, looking. He was looking everywhere for one. Couldn't find one. All of a sudden, he says, a car comes flying by and whoosh. Lo and behold, the tag was 726. See, that's how God works. He shows you something. He'll make sure that you know it was from him. I mean, he show, showed him on the flyby. <laughs> you know, he couldn't find it with his own eyes, but God let him, let him see it on the flyby. Could it be that God was letting him know that July 13th or 14th is the day we go this year? Brother Chooch did a poll, and he was asking people to uh, vote if they thought it was going to be July or if they thought it wasn't going to happen in July. Basically, just two, po two poll questions. That's it. Do you believe it or not? And, and, and somewhere around 1,000 people that was um, that polled or that answered, that responded, and it, it was somewhere between 700 and 1,000 um, bet or 800 to 1,000. Between, between the people that responded, there was 80% of those people that responded responded that they believed it would be in July. Why? I believe, I've got this feeling myself, and I, mean, I don't know why. A lot of people are having this feeling that July is the month. Because we're right at the very end, the last possible stretch of any possibility of the fig tree generation thing being a thing. Because after that, you know, we know we're going to be in the 81 years when Jesus returns and kind of takes away from, you know, the Jesus said it and he is the word of God and, and what he says comes to be. And also the Habakkuk 2.3 verse where it says, the vision is true, wait for it, it shall not lie, and the end it will speak, I'm just paraphrasing, and uh, wait for it, at the end it shall speak, it shall not lie, and though it tarry, it will not tarry. You know, so it's going to seem like Jesus is delayed his coming, or he's late, or the fig tree generation ain't going to work out, but then it says wait for it, because it will happen. The vision is true. So could this be that time? When we're at the very end and everybody's about giving up on it. I mean, everybody's discouraged. Everybody's like, you know what? I'm done with this rapture watching stuff. Man, we can't guess it. We're not going to figure it out. And all I'm doing is getting my hopes up for nothing and it's just wrecking my life. And, and I see it, guys. I mean, I'm there too. You know I mean? I'm watching too. So I know. I know how you guys are feeling. I'm feeling it too. And every time a date comes and goes, it's just like, ugh. It's like the life is just sucked out of you. But that's Okay. We know Jesus is coming, and we know it's not his fault that he's not coming. It's our fault for looking, for trying to figure it out, if anything, But we're because we're wrong. But we, we got. But he commanded us to watch. we got to watch. So, you know, I, I still want to watch. I still want to guess. I don't suspect that I'm going to guess it. But I do believe he's coming very soon. I believe that the very moment that we think he's not coming, that's when he'll come. But... There's a date. There is a date, I believe, and I believe only God knows that date, but he has a date, and it's an appointed time, and we, and it will happen. And, you know, God can burn to me on the porch, I believe, twice, uh, that it was going to be on an obscure day, not on a feast day, not on a set one of the seven, seven feast days. 
And it could be on any other day because, I mean, I, I specifically asked him. I said, I'm not talking about minor, you know, I was, I was having a conversation with the Lord. I'm like, not the minor day, not minor feast days. I'm talking about stuff like Purim and stuff. I'm talking about major feast days like Passover, you know, unleavened bread, atonement, you know, the tabernacles, the major ones, the seven. Well, the first time I asked him that, and, and I had asked him, and, and, and I said, uh, said, in Jesus' name, amen, lightning struck in the distance. But, of course, it was time of year where we have heat lightning or, light, you know, lightning storms off of the distance. You know, I don't, I think heat lightning is a myth, but, because um, you see lightning, but there's no sound. It's just because it's so far away. That I believe that was actually the explanation. But, nevertheless, this time of year that happens, I said, Lord, because, I mean, instantly it happened. I'm like, Lord, was that you? Was that the confirmation? I said, you know. Lord, I said, because I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to the Lord if he shows me something or if he responds to me, especially that fast. I'm excited, but this is the time of year for that. So there could, it could, is it, could it have just been a coincidence, Lord? Could you reconfirm that to me so I'll know it was from you for sure? Only because of that, you know, because this is the time of year for heat lightning. You know, it happens. And, and I no sooner than I had said that and I said, in Jesus' name, amen, a, um, a shooting star went, whew, Right in front of my eyes. Now, both times it was right in front of my eyes, the, the direction that I was praying and looking to begin with. I mean, I didn't I didn't see it out the corner of my eye over here. I literally was looking at it off the front porch this time, but looking at it off to the, um, I guess that would be the, uh, that'd be the east. That would be the southeast. It'd be off to the southeast. Instantly that light, it, it was a shooting star. I mean, there was no mistake in it. It went, it looked like almost like a firework, but it wasn't a firework. It didn't make no sound, and, and this wasn't the time of year anybody would have been shooting fireworks anyways. But it was it was bright, and it went, whew. it made a curly cue. And you know what it reminded me of instantly? When at the end of a video, when you see that little arrow that goes around in a circle that, that says to replay or repeat or whatever, that's what it was. That's what it looked like. I believe that was God's way of saying, okay, I'm telling you twice. This is the second time. I'm repeating it. I'm replaying it. He's confirming it twice, twice, that it would not be on a, 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 an already established feast day. Uh, so that's why I believe it will be its own feast day. It's going to be its own moed. It's going to be at a point in time God already has planned for it, but not on one of the ones that are already here. Because, I mean, Jesus was on the earth when the other ones fulfilled. It makes sense that he will be on the earth when the rest are fulfilled. fulfilled. So this one, I believe, is one that's going to be fulfilled at his when he snatches us away, you know, at a special time, he's not going to be on the earth. He's going to be in the sky. So it's different, the same as a Moab, but different. It's a mystery. Remember, Paul called the rapture a mystery. He called the, you know, all that. Um, even even the, the grace through Christ was a mystery until he died on the cross. The rapture was a mystery then. Um, not that it will happen mysteriously. You know, I mean, you know, of course, in a way, I mean, it's going to be mysterious because it's going to happen instantly. But it's it's not like the it's gonna it's, Jesus is gonna secretly take us and nobody's gonna realize it. The whole world's gonna know we're gone when we leave. There's gonna be trumpets. There's gonna be a probably a great flash of light. Uh, they may even see the dead coming back to life and rising up. I don't know. They might even see us go. I believe that it's gonna be a public event. It's not gonna be hidden. It's not a hidden rapture. It's just a mystery. It was a mystery because nobody knows exactly what day. Because it's God's new, it's going to be a new Moed. But God, but Jesus says, you know, know what hour. And I'm not talking about Matthew 24. I'm not talking about the part where he says heaven and earth shall pass away. He says it two other times that you don't know the hour of the day. But, you know, it could have been in reference to something else. But my point is that maybe we really don't know the hour of the day because uh, we can't. But we, he plainly says to watch because we wouldn't know the timing, the, the season and the timing. In other words, we're going to know, if, if we don't know the day or the hour, we're probably going to know the week or the month or the year. We Definitely. Because so many things are happening that he talked about. It's hard to deny it with the earthquakes. The divers play, you know, all the stuff in Luke 21, Matthew 24, and Mark 13 have played out or playing out as we speak. So guys, get excited and be encouraged because we are at that time. Now, I know that I, every video, you know, you hear it from every video and every watchman, you know, and, and every every other video, is somebody's saying this is about to happen, about to happen, about to happen. Years have passed. It still hasn't happened. But guys, every day that passes, we're that much closer. And we know that it's coming. We know that at some point, it's he's got to come because the world's going to change so much that it'll never be. We won't be welcome here anymore. And, and remember... Revelation 12, it says that the brethren in Revelation 12, 
the baby that was called up to heaven, the brethren, it says, overcame the devil by the word of their testimony and the blood of Jesus Christ. But remember, the saints in the tribulation are overcome by the devil, and they are killed and martyred for Christ. So that church has to be gone before that tribulation starts. I'm telling you, that's got to happen. And it's, it's, there's many verses that make that kind of clear, I believe. So we're going to be gone before it starts, before any of it starts. And at a time when Jesus says, when the world is kind of somewhat normal, and then when we go, hey, just the leaving, our leaving alone will cause chaos. But that will probably be at the same time the, the fallen angels are coming down after the Lord in heaven. It'll probably be at a time when um, everything is just at the, you know, the forefront of just the world completely changing forever and never going back. There won't be anybody worried about marrying, giving into marriage, and eating and drinking because they're going to be running for their lives, scared to death. So if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, now's the time because Jesus is about to come, and if you wait until he comes, it'll be too late. You won't have time to get saved. Even if you hear the trumpet blast, Paul says it happens in a twinkle of an eye. That's not a blinking of an eye. The blinking of an eye, that's actually not that fast. You might say, help me, Lord, you know, but it's the twinkling of an eye. In other words, when the light hits your eye and it goes sparkles, it's it's like a hundredth of a second. It's so fast that it's like one second, I mean, one nanosecond you're here and then you're not. Just, you're not going to have time to get say uh, do anything. You might hear doo-doo and you're looking at Jesus, you know. I, I it's going to happen fast. Accept Jesus Christ now. Accept him now and get saved now so you don't have to face this horrible time why would you want to face this horrible time i mean even even those that love the lord and, and come to the lord and love the lord will be tempted by the devil and and could fall into his trap right now as born again christians we're once saved always saved we can't fall in his trap he, he does not even have permission to even trap us so i mean we might be tempted but we have the holy spirit here with us the restrainer but when that restrainer's gone, the devil's going to have all kinds of power he don't have now. You really want to be subjected to that? No. Nobody does. So don't even think about wanting to volunteer for this time. Because, believe me, God already has a list of people that's going to be here. He already knows who they're going to be. And um, that's their destiny. And he has a plan for them to get saved. But we're already saved. You don't want to be here during that time. So accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior today while there's time. And with that note, I love you guys so much. I'm, I'm, I hope everybody's doing well. And um, happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day in the U.S. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Oh, there's one more thing, guys. I meant to, uh, my brother in Christ wanted me to mention this guy. Um, he's got a channel, a YouTube channel called Ricardo Garcia. And he's got videos in English and in Spanish, and um, they're very good. He's got um, he talks a lot about the um, you know the um, the the Nissan starting in May with the Sun and Aries and stuff. He talks a lot of stuff that Manchild was talking about. Manchild Ministries, you probably remember him. Um, but it's it's a lot of interesting stuff. So check him out. Um, it's Ricardo um, Garcia. Um, I'll put a link in the description box. All right, you guys, love you. Bye.